Fifteen years have passed since the world bid farewell to the beloved comedian and actor Don Knotts, best known for his iconic role as Deputy Sheriff Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show. The late legendary comedian will always be remembered as one of the most beloved figures in the industry. His distinctive personality and high-pitched voice are etched in the memories of many. But despite his widespread fame, Knotts maintained a private personal life. However, Don Knotts's daughter, Karen Knotts, has recently shared some unexpected news about his career, which has taken many fans by surprise. Join us as we unravel this shocking revelation about the iconic Hollywood legend. Jesse Donald Knotts was an American actor and comedian. He is widely known for his role as Deputy Sheriff Barney Fife on the 1960s sitcom The Andy Griffith Show, a role that earned him five Emmy Awards. He also played Ralph Furley on the highly rated sitcom Three's Company from 1979 to 1984. Not starred in multiple comedic films, including leading roles in The Incredible Mr. Limpet in 1964 and The Ghost and Mr. Chicken in 1966. In 2004, TV Guide ranked him number 27 on its 50 Greatest TV Stars of All Time list. Don Knotts was born on July 21, 1924, in Morgantown, West Virginia, to William Jesse Knotts and his wife Elsie Luzetta Knotts. He emerged from humble beginnings to become one of America's most beloved comedic actors. The youngest of four brothers, Knotts faced a challenging childhood marked by the Great Depression and his father's struggles with mental illness. However, Despite these hardships, Knotts found solace and inspiration in comedy, using humor as a coping mechanism and a way to entertain his family and friends. Knotts's father was a farmer. However, he suffered a nervous breakdown and lost his land. Afflicted with both schizophrenia and alcoholism, he died when Knotts was 13 years old. Knotts and his three brothers were then raised by their mother, who ran a boarding house in Morgantown. Knotts developed a passion for performing at a young age, often participating in school plays and community events. His comedic talent became evident during his high school years, where he was known for his humorous impersonations and talent for making people laugh. After graduating, Knotts briefly attended West Virginia University before enlisting in the United States Army during World War II, where he served in a special services unit entertaining troops. Following his military service, Knotts returned to West Virginia University, earning a degree in education. However, his desire to pursue a career in entertainment remained strong. After graduating from college in 1948, Don Knotts moved to New York, where he quickly became a regular on several television and radio programs. In 1955, he made his debut on Broadway in the hit comedy, No Time for Sergeants, which marked his first collaboration with Andy Griffith. In the film, Knotts played the character of Corporal John Brown, a tense and anxious Air Force psychiatrist. His performance was widely acclaimed and helped launch his career as a comedic actor. The film itself is a comedy that follows the misadventures of a country bumpkin, played by Andy Griffith, as he navigates life in the military. After performing in many venues, Knotts got his first major break on television in the soap opera Search for Tomorrow, where he appeared from 1953 to 1955. He came to fame in 1956 when he joined The Steve Allen Show, where his talent for physical comedy and quirky characters quickly made him a standout performer. This breakthrough role marked the beginning of a successful career that would see Knotts become a household name and a beloved figure in American television history. In 1960, Knotts landed the role that would define his career, the clumsy yet lovable deputy Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show. When Knotts heard that a sitcom was in development with Griffith as a small-town sheriff, he phoned his friend and pointed out that every sheriff needs a good deputy, but a deputy who is not so good might be funnier. Knotts envisioned Deputy Fife as a bumbling but proud character, clearly not cut out for work as a lawman. When the show first aired, Griffith was intended to be the comedic lead with Knotts as his straight man, similar to their roles in No Time for Sergeants. However, it was quickly discovered that the show was funnier with the roles reversed. His manic performance made the laid-back Griffith seem wiser, and the sheriff's respect for Fife signaled to audiences that the deputy was more than merely an idiot. His portrayal of Barney earned him five Emmy Awards for Best Supporting Actor in a Television Comedy and made him a beloved figure in households across America. 
Knott's chemistry with Andy Griffith and his impeccable comedic timing turned Barney Fife into an unforgettable character, and his catchphrases and antics remain popular to this day. During the filming of the show, Knott's believed that The Andy Griffith Show would conclude after its fifth season, prompting him to seek other opportunities. He then signed a five-film deal with Universal Studios. In his autobiography, Knott's confessed that he had not officially signed the deal when Griffith decided to extend the series. However, he had already decided to move on, convinced he wouldn't get another chance. Knott's departed from the show in 1965. His character's exit was explained by Deputy Fife's rise to prominence as he joined the police force in Raleigh, North Carolina. After leaving the Andy Griffith show in 1965, Knott's transitioned to a successful film career, starring in a series of family-friendly comedies. Some of his most notable films include The Incredible Mr. Limpet in 1964, where he played a mild-mannered man who transforms into a talking fish, and The Ghost and Mr. Chicken in 1966, in which he portrayed a nervous typesetter who spends a night in a haunted house. These films showcased Knotts' unique brand of humor and solidified his reputation as a comedic genius. Knotts reprised his role as Barney Fife several times in the 1960s. He made five guest appearances on The Andy Griffith Show, gaining him another two Emmy Awards. He later appeared once on the spin-off Mayberry RFD, where he was present as the best man for the marriage of Andy Taylor and his longtime love, Helen Crump. He continued to work steadily, though he did not appear as a regular on any successful television series. Through the late 1960s and early 1970s, Knott served as the spokesman for Dodge Trucks and was featured prominently in a series of print ads and dealer brochures. On television, he went on to host a variety show hybrid on NBC titled The Don Knott Show, which aired on Tuesdays during the fall of 1970. However, the series was low-rated and short-lived, and Knott's was uncomfortable with the variety show format. He also made frequent guest appearances on other shows such as The Bill Cosby Show and Here's Lucy. In 1972, Knott's voiced an animated version of himself in two episodes of the new Scooby-Doo movies, The Spooky Fog of Juneberry, in which he played a lawman resembling Barney Fife and Guess Who's Not Coming to Dinner. He appeared as Felix Unger in a stage version of Neil Simon's The Odd Couple, with Art Carney as Oscar Madison, and toured in the Neil Simon comedy Last of the Red Hot Lovers. Beginning in 1975, Knotts was teamed with Tim Conway in a series of slapstick films aimed at children. These included the Disney film The Apple Dumpling Gang and its sequel, The Apple Dumpling Gang Rides Again. They also did two independent films, the boxing comedy The Prize Fighter and the mystery comedy The Private Eyes. Knotts co-starred in several other Disney films, including Gus, No Deposit, No Return, Herbie Goes to Monte Carlo, and Hot Lead and Cold Feet. In 1979, Don Knotts returned to his successful TV roots, taking on the role of the quirky, laid-back landlord Mr. Furley in the controversial comedy Three's Company, until its conclusion in 1984. His performance on the show introduced him to a new generation of fans and added another iconic role to his impressive resume. In 1986, Knotts collaborated with his fellow cast members from The Andy Griffith Show, including Griffith and Ron Howard, in a highly successful television movie special, Return to Mayberry. In 1987, he joined the cast of the first-run syndication comedy What a Country as Principal Bud McPherson for its remaining 13 episodes. It was produced by Martin Ripps and Joseph Storetsky, who had previously worked on Three's Company. Working alongside Griffith once again, Knotts portrayed a troublesome neighbor in a series of episodes for Griffith's courtroom drama, Matlock, from 1988 to 1992. Knotts, who at various times in his career struggled with severe hypochondria and a degenerative eye disease, had somewhat of a career resurgence in the late 1990s. In 1998, he starred in the critically acclaimed film Pleasantville, playing a mysterious TV repairman who introduces two young people from the 1990s to the nostalgic world of 1950s television. In 1998, his hometown of Morgantown, West Virginia, changed the name of the street formerly known as South University Avenue to Don Knotts Boulevard on his birthday, which is now officially designated as Don Knotts Day. 
a day to honor the beloved actor and comedian. Also that day, in honor of Knotts' role as Barney Fife, he was named an honorary deputy sheriff with the Monongalia County Sheriff's Department. Knotts was recognized in 2000 with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. He continued to act on stage, but much of his film and television work after 2000 was as voice talent. In 2002, he appeared again with Scooby-Doo in the video game, Scooby-Doo, Night of 100 Frights. He also spoofed his appearances on that show in various promotions for Cartoon Network and in a parody of Robot Chicken, where he was teamed with Phyllis Diller. In 2003, he teamed up again with Tim Conway to provide voices for the direct-to-video children's series, Hermie and Friends, which continued until Knotts' death. In 2005, he was the voice of Mayor Turkey Lurkey in Chicken Little, his first Disney movie since 1979. On September 12, 2003, he was in Kansas City in a stage version of On Golden Pond, when he received a call from John Ritter's family telling him that his former Threes Company co-star had died of an aortic dissection that day. He and his co-stars attended the funeral four days later. Knotts had appeared with Ritter one final time earlier in 2003 in a cameo on Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter in an episode that paid homage to their earlier television series. He was the last Threes Company star to work with Ritter. During this period, macular degeneration in both eyes caused the otherwise robust Knotts to become virtually blind. His live appearances on television were few. In 2005, he parodied his Ralph Furley character while playing a Paul Young variation in a Desperate Housewives sketch on the third annual TV Land Awards. He parodied that part one final time in Stone Cold Crazy, an episode of the sitcom That 70s Show, where he played the landlord. It was his last live-action television appearance. His final role was in Air Buddies in 2006, a direct-to-video sequel to Air Bud, voicing the sheriff's deputy dog, Sniffer. In 1999, Knotts, who was known for his reserved and private nature, shared his life story in his autobiography, Barney Fife and Other Characters I Have Known. Co-written with Robert Metz, the book offers a heartfelt and humorous look into Knotts's life and career, from his humble beginnings in West Virginia to his rise to stardom in Hollywood. In his autobiography, Knotts shares candid stories and personal reflections on his journey through the entertainment industry. He provides insights into his early years, including his struggles and triumphs, as well as his time in the military during World War II. The book delves into his work on The Steve Allen Show and the experiences that led to his iconic role as Deputy Barney Fife on The Andy Griffith Show. Barney Fife and other characters I have known not only chronicles Knotts' professional achievements, but also his personal challenges and growth. It highlights his resilience, dedication to his craft, and the joy he brought to audiences worldwide. For fans of Don Knotts, the autobiography provides an intimate and comprehensive look at the life of a beloved comedian who left an indelible mark on American entertainment. Knotts was married three times. His first marriage was to Catherine Metz in 1947. The couple had two children, a son named Thomas and a daughter named Karen. Knotts's demanding career and frequent travel put a strain on the marriage and the couple divorced in 1964. However, despite the separation, Knotts remained close to his children throughout his life. In 1974, Knotts married Laura Lee Chuchna. This marriage lasted nine years ending in divorce in 1983. Knotts later married Francis Yarborough in 2002, and they remained together until his death in 2006. Francis was a steadfast companion during Knotts's later years, providing support and care as his health declined. Knotts's friendships, particularly with his co-stars, also played a significant role in his life. His bond with Andy Griffith, his co-star on The Andy Griffith Show, was particularly notable. The two shared a deep friendship that extended beyond their on-screen partnership. Griffith often spoke fondly of Knotts, praising his talent and warmth. Their bond was evident both on and off the screen, and they remained close friends until Knotts's passing. 
Knotts also developed a strong friendship with Tim Conway, his co-star in several films and television projects. Their comedic chemistry and mutual respect led to a lasting friendship that delighted both their fans. Despite his public persona as a cheerful and humorous entertainer, Knotts faced personal challenges, including struggles with anxiety and hypochondria. These issues, which began in his childhood, persisted throughout his life. Knotts often used humor as a coping mechanism, turning his anxieties into comedic material that resonated with audiences. In his later years, Knotts faced declining health, including a battle with lung cancer. Despite his health issues, he continued to perform and make appearances, demonstrating his enduring passion for entertainment. Knotts died at age 81 on February 24, 2006, at the Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles from pulmonary and respiratory complications of pneumonia related to lung cancer. He underwent treatment at Cedars-Sinai Medical Center in the months before his death, but returned home after reportedly feeling better. He was buried at Westwood Memorial Park in Los Angeles. Knotts's obituaries cited him as a major influence on other entertainers. In early 2011, his grave's plain granite headstone was replaced with a bronze plaque depicting several of his movie and television roles. Don Knotts' charm wasn't just for his personal life, it shone through in his professional work as well, making him a favorite among fans and fellow actors. In 2000, he received a star on the prestigious Hollywood Walk of Fame, a symbol of his lasting impact on the entertainment industry. This affection for Knott extended beyond the bright lights of Hollywood. His hometown of Morgantown, West Virginia wanted to pay tribute to their local hero, so they commissioned artist Jamie Lester to create a sculpture of the iconic comedy legend. The sculpture was unveiled in 2016 and stands as a permanent reminder of the timeless laughter and joy that Don Knotts brought to the world. Even though his personal life had its complexities, Don Knotts' legacy lives on both in Hollywood and in the heart of his hometown. Fifteen years after the untimely death of Don Knott, his daughter Karen Knotts took the opportunity to open up about his final moments. In a conversation with Closer Weekly, she shared that his last days were a mix of joy and sorrow. Despite his severe illness, Knott always managed to keep a smile on his face. Karen shared a heartwarming story of how he continued to bring joy to their lives, even in the face of death. However, there was a moment Karen later felt regret over. She and her stepmother burst into laughter so hard that they had to exit the room. Director Howard Storm later told Karen that she shouldn't have left, stating that her father would have appreciated hearing their laughter. Looking back, Karen expressed a tinge of regret for not being present with her father during those crucial moments, despite it being his humor that sparked the laughter. His longtime friend Andy Griffith was among the last to see him before his passing. With a heavy heart, Andy shared his deep affection for Don Knott, holding his hand as he said goodbye. Andy Griffith shared a touching memory of Knott's final moments. He said, I told him I loved him and held his hand. His breathing slowed down, and I believe he could hear me. Even though Knott had quit smoking just some years before, his lung cancer diagnosis came as a shock. Despite the seriousness of his illness, Knott maintained a remarkably positive outlook. He even chose not to inform his children about his chemotherapy treatments, convinced he would overcome it, and wanted to live his life as normally as possible. In the end, Knott succumbed to complications from lung cancer. News reports mentioned that he had been battling some health issues for a few years in the past which is why he had to cancel some appearances during his career. The details of his health challenges remained undisclosed, leaving a certain mystery surrounding his final years. Following Don Knott's death, those who were closest to him shared their fond memories. Andy Griffith, reflecting on their long-lasting friendship, spoke of Knott's modesty, humility, and sharp wit. Ron Howard, another colleague, simply described Knott as one of the genuinely kindest individuals. These memories offer a glimpse into a man whose warmth, down-to-earth personality, and comedic talent left an indelible mark on those who had the privilege of knowing him.